player. Make sure my phone's off too. <laughs> what is going on, guys? Welcome to the Wednesday night live stream. Now, tonight I have a pretty awesome guy on. If you haven't met him before, this is John Norris, and he's a microbiologist. Now, you've been in the industry for quite a long time, and now you're actually teaching math and science, which is pretty awesome because I know you're doing lots of stuff about trying to bring reefs and stuff into the classrooms and help and inspire and teach kids. So love it. And that really is, you know, the future of where our hobby is going and inspiring all the new kids. So it's pretty cool. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yep. So what, what actually, just out of curiosity, what inspired you to get into the whole marine biology and the reefs in the first place? Well, so when I was about 12 years old, my, my dad, he grew clownfish. Oh, and nice. I thought that was the most amazing thing in the early 90s that you could grow clownfish mm -hmm. um, at home. So that really what got me the, you know, bit me, the, the saltwater bug bit me about, about that, around that 1992 area, not to date myself. Um, and it, for ever since then, I was fascinated. You know, live in California, you live by the beach, so you go to the ocean a lot. And I just fell in love with it. And that was something that I wanted to pursue after, you know, college and, um, you know, focused my, you know, I was kind of bouncing all over the place with what I wanted to do. And, you know, science was always my favorite thing. And then I wanted to get into marine biology and ocean conservation and bioengineering. Um, so that was my main focus uh, when I when I finished school. Um, that that kind of was my big thing. So. It all started back with my dad, so he, I could thank him for that. No, that's awesome. So prime example of how you know inspiring the young the young kids with it. Exactly, yep. you start them young and then they get hooked. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what we want to do. Yeah. So what's what's the age group of kids you're actually teaching right now? So right now I'm working with uh, 10th to 12th grade high school students, yep. so anywhere from 14 to even 18 years old. Mm -hmm. You know, they depending on uh, where they fall for their birthday. So I try to focus on students who have a little bit of common knowledge with at least chemistry mm -hmm. and basics of biology, because what we talk about in, you know, for the class in this club, um, it's a little, little bit above the normal students uh, area of expertise. So I, I do require that they have a little bit of chemistry knowledge, a little bit of, you know, biological systems, the basics, and then we really start slow and then introduce them um, into the basics of reef keeping and ocean conservation. Mm -hmm. So it's it's nice to have that group of um, students who are aware of their surroundings, aware of the world in, around them, and know that they you know kind of are in a mess in terms of the environment. Um, and so they ask me all the time, "What can we do as students to help?" And I I don't want to say you know there's other schools that are doing this, but uh, especially in Southern California, where I am, we don't have a lot of curriculum that focus solely on marine biology mm -hmm. and ocean conservation. So I'm trying to bring this into the fold and, and get this moving uh, as more schools become STEM-based, you know, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, um, and really focus on things that matter. And, ocean, and the ocean is really important. And mm -hmm. you know, we can see all around the world, our oceans are in dire straits. So you never know the next student could come up yep. with that brilliant idea that's going to clean up that garbage patch or it's going to remove that, you know, that red tide um, and the green algae in Florida. So that's what I'm trying to bring. And that's what I hope to inspire. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, even at MACNA, actually, a couple of weeks ago when I was talking to Charlie Varon about that, same thing. He's saying he, why he loves reef tanks and everything is because that is what inspires people to think about conserving the ocean and helping save the reefs and everything else, right? Without seeing it, you have no tie to it. There's nothing to really bring that awareness because it's underwater. Most people don't even know it's there, right? Until you. Exactly. And, you know, we, we're lucky enough to have some really great uh, aquariums, public aquariums in California. But unfortunately, a lot of these students never get a chance to to visit them and, and not only learn about local marine life, but marine life all over the place. And, um, you know, in corals, especially they, you know, they'll see it on, on a show or a cartoon. And, uh, you know, we all know SpongeBob and Finding Nemo and Finding Dory. And it, it kind of gives them a false sense of what is really out there mm -hmm. and what students can actually do to help yep. situations and learn more about 
um, things that they're interested in. And they're really interested in it. You know, they'll see something but not know about it and not know where to go and look for the answers. Mm -hmm. No, very true. So how long have you actually been teaching this or starting to bring the reefs into the classrooms? So this uh, been in between jobs, uh, just moved back to California. I was lucky enough to get a, a, a teaching gig right away when I got back and we started very slowly. A uh, good buddy of mine, Chad and Clayton, love that dude. Yeah, he's a good guy. Uh, he's an amazing guy. Love him so much. He was awesome enough to send me some of his pods. We had microscopes. We took a look at it. So I was teaching biology and we kind of switched geared and kind of focused more on the marine side mm -hmm. uh, because it was something that they needed to learn once they got out of high school and they don't have these skills yet. So I started real slow um, just by looking at, you know, a couple pods under microscopes. And then I brought a very small tank in and let the kids set it up, you know, from start to finish, started with the dry tank, showed them what, you know, live sand is, how to pick out live rock. Um, basics of water chemistry for salt water. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so now at, I'm at another uh, new school and we're lucky enough to have the space and, and the environment where we can actually set up a decent marine lab and let these, these students really dive into the realms of not only reefing, but doing experiments and labs and mm -hmm. things that they're going to be doing in college. Yeah. Um, you know, environmental sciences is huge mm -hmm. and they don't get, to learn this until they're in college. So to start them off at the high school level with a little bit of introduction piques their interest. And this is something that they look forward to when they go to college and, and want to study. Yep. No, very cool. And honestly, I'm sure there's been a ton of people that are actually going to turn into marine biologists, and environmentalists and stuff from this experience that you're giving them at a younger age, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, uh, we were talking earlier, I was talking to uh, one of my students and I was showing him some old pictures of corals that I used to have and uh, you know, how we would trade it and barter and sell some. And he's like, wait, you can grow coral? <laughs> he didn't care about the money part at first. He was just like, oh, you can grow grow coral. And I said, yeah, you can most definitely do that. And many other things with you know a reef fish tank. Yeah. So uh, right away, just one talking to one person <laughs> just totally opened up his mind to so many possibilities. And he's been asking me questions like how much would you know this cost and how much, you know, how much space do I need? And so he's already planning it out in his head. And it's amazing that just one conversation with one student got him to uh, start thinking about the big picture. And, and then I have a, another group of students who are really into ocean conservation. And, you know, we're, we're definitely looking forward to working with Heal the Bay, uh, you know, Ocean Cleanup, Coral Restoration Foundation, anything that we can do um, to help not only the environment, but to help the students get the necessary skills to take to college because it is all about experience. It's about, you know, being sh shown the world of what this realm of science has to offer. And a lot of these colleges and universities that a lot of my kids are trying to get into are requiring these types of classes yep. um, just to give them just a bit, just a taste, you know, they're so excited and looking so forward to doing this. And, um, you know, I'm trying to work with some, some partners, um, and, and get some donations and you know i don't want to have the kids pay for everything obviously i'll pay for whatever i can pay for mm -hmm. not a it's not a cheap hobby nope. uh, <laughs> you know it's that was something that i had to tell them as well it's uh, it, it it does cost a little it's an investment mm -hmm. and you know how to manage your investment is important so that's <laughs> a thing that we're trying to teach them as well is to be um, not only reef savvy but also uh, money savvy while they're doing this. Mm -hmm. The the one kid you inspire with the corals probably like chiching with his high end frags by now. <laughs> oh, he, he's just immediately like, what's the most expensive coral? <laughs> I'm like, well, we, it depends. It depends yeah. on you know what's hot that you know, <laughs> that month or you know this part of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, but he he's really into the zoanthids and mushroom corals and uh, I say you know that's the easy stuff first. Yeah. You know you work with the easy stuff. Move move yourself up to the higher grade. Um, you know, corals. And he already knows what soft corals, LPS and SPS is. And I didn't even teach him about that. He went on his own and, and did research and found all this out. So it's, you know, it's planting that little seed um, yeah. for these students. And they just, they just take it, Let's take, take it, it from there. there. There's been a ton of people just in the comments were like, oh, I wish I had this when I was in school. I wish I had this. One guy's like, oh, I would have went to school more if this was available. <laughs> right. Yeah, They're, I mean, this is it's it's interesting, and it, it makes them want to learn about it more. 
um, where it's not, you just don't have a tank with fish in it and then and you just leave it there and it's there for show. Yeah. Um, you know, we're trying to explain, you know, you know, the, the systems, the ecosystems, where you'll find certain fish and coral, um, the chemistry of water, mm -hmm. uh, how to do proper husbandry, yeah. how to, you know, to, to do cleaning and look for illnesses and fish. It, it's, it's really amazing because these students are so used to like this rigorous curriculum of <laughs> math and language and history. Mm -hmm. And then you throw something interesting like biology and they're like, I'm coming to school every day so I can learn about this. That's awesome. I would be in there. I'd be hooked. I'm I know. I wish I had this when I was in school too. Exactly. Uh, you know, I remember cool. that, I having a teacher that had a freshwater planted tank and uh, it was always cool to go sit next to it and just, just look. Yep. We, never knew any, we didn't know what the fish were. We didn't know what the plants were. We didn't know how to take care of it. It was just kind of the teacher's thing. This, this, this way we're letting, I'm letting the kids take the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. uh, I instruct and guide, but they're the ones that are actually controlling how this is going to play out for them. Nope. That's very cool. So you had them set up tanks yep. basically from scratch. Yes. And do you have much for livestock in there? More fish, more corals, bit of a mix of everything. Oh yeah. So we're, we're definitely, um, so we started small. Of course, everybody wanted a clownfish. That was, yep. that was the number one thing. So we started with the clownfish. And, you know, teaching them the right way of setting up a tank and making sure it's cycled properly and you don't have too much bio load. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, so they're starting to see why we take such a long time to set up tanks. Yep. And they're appreciating uh, the time because it's going to make a healthy environment in the long run. Mm -hmm. uh, we can do things nice and slow. So instead, of wins the race. Yep. Uh, you just can't rush into it. So there, there are, they have lists of what fish they want to see and what corals they would like to see and, um, and we're right now we're doing biome specific tanks. Mm -hmm. So we're doing uh, Caribbean right now. Nice. And then we're going to do a, um, uh, a Pacific type tank, like an intertidal tank. So we'll oh, have cool. native tank, native species from Southern California all the way up the, the coast mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just kind of experiment with things. But like I said, we, I'm, I'm very fortunate to be in a space that has running water, mm -hmm. sinks, plumbing, and we can really turn, you know, starting with one little tank into a bigger tank into a full blown fledged lab is my ultimate goal. That would be very cool. Be a whole nother level, teach you how to fry corals. The cool thing, too, you're saying about the native tanks is even if they're out at the beach or looking at tide pools, they're going to find stuff they recognize and know about and get even more excited to teach somebody else about it, which is kind of exactly. Cool and that's, you know, and that's the whole goal is if I can reach a couple kids and they reach a couple kids, you have this, you know, the spreading effect of, this is really awesome. And this is something that um, I'm not only learning about, but, you know, I can enjoy this at home as a hobbyist. And, mm -hmm. you know, we're really kind of making new hobbyists, yeah. um, not only academically, but, you know, they can go home and start their own tank and, you know, grow their own coral and get their own fish and know how to do it properly before they, you know, are set up for failure when they don't know what they're doing. No, which is huge. So do you know, have many of your kids already started or set up a personal one since you started doing this? I do have one student who yeah. just, uh, he just bought a 20 gallon breeder. Nice. It was asking me what the best kind of lights for it. So yeah. we were we were looking at different types of lighting, um, showing them LEDs versus you know fluor compact mm -hmm. fluorescents and how lights like we used to do. Of course, everything's LED now, and I like the LED route. Yeah. So uh, it's really interesting that you know just just this is just the beginning of the school year too, and we already got kids who want to set this up at home. You know, they, I actually had a parent call me and said, "Is this for real?" Uh, my son's coming home and he's talking about all this stuff. And, uh, is this really something that you can do? I'm like, absolutely. You can absolutely do it. That's awesome. No, it's cool, man. Lots of inspiration. Uh, That's the goal. That's definitely the goal. No, D from Brooklyn. I donate salt water to my school's Marine lab. No coral system yet. It's fish only. So leave it surely, man. Get him in hey. there. That's right. You take take your time, man. Slow, slow and steady. That's what I mean. We we wanted to start with kind of a fish only with live rock, and it kind of morphed into okay. Well, they want coral now, so yeah. What's nice is I'm going to be able to set up multiple tanks, and we can have different perspectives of you know fish only or mm -hmm. coral only. Um, so yeah, it's you'll get there. Trust me. It just takes a little time and effort. You know, no, especially exactly. when you're out of school. Money's it, money's not easy to go around. Yeah, it's it's awesome that the school's supporting it and promoting it too, which is really cool to see. 
I mean, abs- you know, my my ultimate goal is to make this a permanent curriculum. Um, mm-hmm. I want this to be in, in not just my school, but every school, because yeah. I, I sit on the college application board for seniors at my mm-hmm. school and they look for higher level sciences. Yeah. Environmental sciences is a big thing right now, and they need to know what to expect as they get into college. Mm-hmm. Oh, very cool. It's a great way to do it. Uh, a couple of people asking if you have your own YouTube channel or if you have ways <laughs> to find you online. Um, I, I did have a, uh, I did was pretty active on a YouTube channel, but if you just type in John Norris, J O N uh, Norris, like Chuck, yes, you can see red hair, a uh, little <laughs> bit of a stubble beard. We, yep. we are related. Uh, <laughs> We do have the, that little Norris gene in common. Um, but yeah, just uh, if you just Google, you know, go to YouTube, type in John Norris. Uh, there's tons of videos that I used mm-hmm. to do. Uh, I worked with jellyfish, uh, you know, did my clownfish. I have my own personal tanks on there, mm-hmm. how to frag corals, uh, you name it. I, I'm not as big as uh, as you, Dev, and Reef, dude. So. You're up there, buddy. You're up there. Yeah, I just, I just have maybe five to seven videos up. Yeah, everything else is kind of just me not talking and me just showing <laughs> <Okay. laughs> um if you guys want to know how to spell it i do have his name in the description below so you can copy and paste and search you should find his channel that's it's pretty easy there's a couple on there and it's mostly all marine based and fish and coral related so you know you know you're in the right place <laughs> exactly yep um okay so you got your class now um so hopefully you can expand that more and get more and bigger systems over time yes you know ideally what i want to do is um I want to develop a marine lab where, yeah. you know, these students can grow corals that are endangered, mm-hmm. um, work with fish, breed them, you yep. know, learn yep. about aquaculture and mariculture, mm-hmm. um, experiment with different types of, um, sorry, my computer is weird, uh, learning about how to, ex- to explore the realm of just corals and saltwater environments and, you know, just just so they can get the idea and then let them do their research and let them run with it. But ideally the lab is my ultimate goal. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I want to put in an RODI system, uh, you know, frag systems and, you know, you name it, I want to do it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's going to take some time and, you know, hopefully some help from some friends and, uh, you know, the students definitely are very on board with this. So this is something that they really want to do and help out. So any, I mean, any right, right now, starting small, yep. just like everybody, you know, mm-hmm. and then and then get bigger, and and hopefully, you know, it turns into a full fledged uh, curriculum, and you know, we can really start getting into environmental science. So we do have that class, but it's not a higher, uh, it's kind of more of elective. Mm-hmm. I kind of want to turn it into a, you know, this is a class that you should be taking because you are going to be learning about this in college. Yeah, no, that'd be awesome. Make it legit yeah. curriculum. This is what you're doing. Uh, Nipa Reefer was asking, is there somewhere they, a donation could be made if they want to help support your projects or your school tanks? Uh, yeah, absolutely. We're, we're in the process of setting up um, not really like a GoFundMe page, but mm-hmm. kind of a, um, a page that's going to be linked to our high school, to Alameda okay. High School in Mission Hills. Okay. And, um, you know, definitely going to be taking, you know, any kind of help is going to be way appreciated. Okay. Um, you know, like I said, it's not a cheap thing to do. And I'm kind of starting this from scratch and, you know, kind of writing as I go. So uh, we'll definitely have something up soon. And I would okay. like to have a dedicated website to where people can see the progress, see what we're doing, That'd see be what awesome. we're working on, um, and try to tie it into, you know, other companies and, and see how we can help. You know, no. that's the ultimate goal. The one really cool thing is, too, I think once you have a successful kind of program going in your school, I think other schools will start to try and mimic it. That's and that's really awesome. and really that's the goal is to get other schools to adopt mm-hmm. not only a curriculum but a, a great idea of bringing something that you don't normally see at your typical school and 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 expand on it and make this you know and then have workshops for teachers and teach them how to do things you know so where you don't have to be a marine biologist or a hobbyist or someone who's really into uh, you know fish and and in the ocean but you know where any kind of science teacher can take a professional development class, learn about the basics, and they can start their own club with resources that are going to help them. Yep. So, I mean, that's what we're hoping to do is, is, is this program is kind of the, you know, the, the match that's going to light the fire and, and let it spread. You know, I, I shouldn't say that because I'm in California. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm like looking around right now at, at, the, at the hillside that's very brown and dry. So I shouldn't say 
those two words together. It's okay, we'll we'll douse it with salt water. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just pour salt water on. Yeah, just pour salt water on it. It fixes it fix all the fires. <laughs> Um, when you, do you have that page set up for your school? Let me know. And I'll put it in this video description later. Cause a few people are yeah. asking me about it. So that'd be fantastic. And right. Yep. And what's really cool is we do have a media uh, group. We have a media class. So those students in that class are actually developing the website. So Perfect. everything kind of ties together in our school. So that, that, you know, we're bringing everybody together. Uh, it's a sense of community and everybody feels like they're contributing, um, to a higher, higher good. You know what you should do is get some of the kids to make some educational videos on it to throw on your guys' site. See, that's that's a fantastic idea. Mm -hmm. That's so. a fantastic idea. They, that you know, they and we we do at our school. We have a weekly um, kind of a recap of the week video for the students. Mm -hmm. so that that definitely can be possible. We do have a production center and uh, an editing room. So perfect. Just give me more ideas, to... man. Yeah, keep them coming. It'd just be a good way to, you know, other kids that aren't directly in it, maybe it pique their interest in it, right? So exactly, yeah, exactly. And and that's the whole thing is I don't want to exclude anyone. Um, and, and I, I kind of want this to be a, a school-based thing. Obviously, we'll, we'll have restraints, but um, any way that you know, kids can, the students can be part of it or contribute, mm -hmm. and it could be from anything from you know, we have kids who are in a recycling program, they can go to the beach and pick up trash. Yep. You know, they're helping. They're helping. Mm -hmm. That that's you know the core values of what our what our class is about. No, that's awesome. Have you taken kids out to like tide pools and that type of stuff with them yet? So we just set up a um, uh, a field trip. We have the Cabrillo Marine Aquarium, which is probably the closest aquarium public pu public aquarium that's close to us. Mm -hmm. Ideally, Monterey Bay would be fantastic, or the Long yeah. Beach Aquarium would be uh, you know the most amazing trip for them. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're we're in we're, we're starting small. Uh, the Cabrillo Marine Aquarium is free, uh, so we we just have to pay for buses, and uh, you know, eventually after that, we're we're hoping that I can take a group up to uh, Monterey Bay, San Francisco, um, and just just go just go check it out. And and I encourage the students to ask their parents, have them take you to a state beach. We have tons of state beaches in California. Mm -hmm. Go explore. Go go look at the the tide pools. Check out you know. At night, there's bioluminescent algae in the water crashing. Oh, really? Oh, oh yeah. We have, we have lots of – it's really cool to watch. Uh, at night, you have the stars above. I have the bioluminescence, nice green glow. Um, so I encourage everybody to just, you know, don't be in front of your TV. Don't play Fortnite all the time, kids. Um, mm. You can go outside and learn something. Okay. I want to go see this bioluminescent beach now. <laughs> That'd be Any, awesome. Anywhere from southern, uh, you know, Southern California. We live kind of close to Malibu, yeah. um, down to Santa Monica, Long Beach. You know, you can find it there. It's really interesting, especially in the summertime. You see a lot of it. Oh, that's very cool. Love it. Okay, I just got to quickly find your channel link. A few people are asking for it. Okay. It okay. might be under John Norris Marine. John Norris Marine. Oh, yeah. There's a, there's a. Okay, I found it. All right, here's there's fish tanks on it. Should be safe. Picture of you like hiking, I think, on a mountain. Is that the right one? Yeah. That's the one? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I like to go. I do survival training up in the Sequoia National Forest every summer. Oh, very cool. So what, you else, just, what else do you teach? <laughs> I, I'm a jack of all trades, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Okay. There you go. There's the channel link. Hi there, Jelly Jelly. <laughs> ah, so there's, there Chris might Hudson be another one. If you, if you just type in John Norris, there'll yep. be another one. Of more fish stuff and okay. animals and, um i do a, I, I i just love nature and being outside so if i see something i videotape it i you know i catch it on my camera throw it on youtube so people can watch it and check it out because people are amazed on how many animals um i run into mm -hmm. uh, you know if i'm again i don't want to date myself but if anybody's familiar with ace ventura pet detective yeah, yeah. Um, you know I, I always go come my jungle friends do they all come and birds will come, chip, you know, chipmunks and squirrels, and you know, snakes will come out of holes and things. <laughs> so it's uh, it's 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 weird. People call me weird because for whatever it is, whenever I'm around, animals come out. That's awesome. All right, I, I expect to see more animal videos popping up on your YouTube now. Yeah, see, there's a lot of there's it's a mixed bag, you know. So it's a potpourri of fun stuff. You just need the Australian accent, be like, "There's a wild snake coming for us." <laughs> Mikey, watch out. Perfect. Alligator. See, you're practicing. Got this. <laughs> Got it down. Jack of all trades. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's awesome. 
Um, yeah, one thing. I think tide pools would be really cool for a lot of the kids, too. Like, even now, I was... We went to Vancouver Island a month or two ago, and I drove, like, three hours out because I re read somewhere was, like, one of the best tide pools around. So I was there for, like, hours to check out. Love it. I mean, it, it, it's really cool because it's going to be different every day. Yep. You know? as, as the tide comes in, it brings in little critters. As it goes out, it leaves some. Um, you know, I really... When I was a kid, I used to love going and checking out the anemones. Yeah. And just and just putting my finger and just trying to touch at it and then feel them retract um you know it was really cool and you know like you said you, you go out there and it's you could spend hours all day mm -hmm. looking around and finding crabs and you know little fish and fry and you know depending on where you live hopefully you live by a beach or mm -hmm. i have a lake i don't got any tide pools it's fresh water <laughs> yeah you you have little ponds by you you know mm -hmm. in the lake but you can still find all kinds of stuff, crawfish and yep. snails and little crabs. And yep. um, True. so you just you just have to look. You know, a lot of these kids are so focused on their devices and mm -hmm. they're so one-dimensional. You know, all you have to do is look up. You'll see tons of things. Yep. Reconnect with nature and the ocean. Exactly. You know, that's the goal is, is move them out of this technology thing. You can still use it, but don't depend on it. And, and, you know, like, when, you know, when we were kids, you can go outside and play. <laughs> I never, I don't see that anymore, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. So a few people are suggesting that you should do YouTube videos on the class progress. I, that, that's a fantastic idea. Yep. And, and um, you know, that's, that, uh, see, I'm taking notes. I yep. have a little notepad right here. <laughs> so, so thank you guys. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, we do want to do a lot of updates and mm -hmm. show what we're doing, especially when we start getting into aquaculture, mariculture. Um, you know, I have, I have one student who's really fascinated with algae. So he wants to start growing seaweed and algae. So I said, nice. okay, we can do that. Get him culturing phyto and different stuff in the class. Oh yeah. Just, mm -hmm. you know, you know, we do, um, I have a, a nice little vial that I saved when I was at Arizona state of bioluminous and algae, it's yep. still viable that I would like to recreate and grow that in, in the, in the lab. So, Very cool. That'd we'll be see, awesome. We'll, we'll, we'll see, you know, it's, uh, the sky's the limit with this program. So how, um, okay. Just, do you actually know, have you ever tried culturing bioluminous at LG? Like is it easy to get to reproduce? It's, it's not as easy as you would think with mm -hmm. like other types of algae, um, you know, like green water, phytoplankton, yep. even yep. like Kato growing, you know, growing the macro algae. Um, it's very short lived because as they're disturbed, they start to die off. But then you have yeah. to okay. you have to re uh, reanimate them, mm -hmm. and it takes a little bit longer to grow than you'd say like your typical uh, phytoplankton. Okay, that'd be cool. I'd love to try that. Let me know if you do do that it's, and it works out. Really fun. Yeah, I mean it's 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 a really neat project, and I, I can't recall the website um, offhand, but I, I can definitely send it to you where you can actually buy a small vial of <laughs> bioluminous algae. Yeah. Oh, very cool. I want to culture some now. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's really cool, especially when you swirl the flask at night and it just glows. Yeah, exactly. That's very cool. So you had, so um, you're saying you had pods, like Chad's going to do some pods. You guys are checking those under microscopes. Yeah. That was kind of how you started bridging the kids into it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Chad sent me down some, uh, some copepods to take a look at and, uh, we didn't have the best microscopes, so I brought in one of mine that I had mm -hmm. and um, and basically taught the kids how to use a microscope, how to run a lab, mm -hmm. and um, it was a video microscope, so we were able to project nice. that onto the wall. And I just said, you guys, this is, how, this is how I set it up, but I want you to figure out how to work this and do it. And, and they did, and they were able to capture it, and they took pictures, they measured. Um, you know, it was really fascinating. They drew pictures of them. It, it, and it all started with a itty bitty tiny little copepod, a little zooplankton. Yeah. And, and then I had and I had a, a group of kids from that class go on and you know start doing their own tanks. And even parents, they're like, I want to do this. I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to cause any divorces for you people. But <laughs> um, you know, I'm just tread lightly when you tell your wife you want to start off a, a reef tank. Fa family hobbies. Hey, if the kids already bought into it. Get the parents in too. It's pretty solid. I'm telling you, man. It's it start it starts with that itty bitty seed, and it works its way up the food chain, you know. And then the parents are like, I want to do this too. This is fun. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, Tristan's reef is a saying. Uh, get me after the stream with John's details. I want to donate a phytoplankton macroalgae reactor. 
complete with oh, lighting wow, and power supply awesome. for his class. That's wow. Wicked. We could definitely use that. That would be fantastic. I've been making a list of items that we would love to have, and that was that's definitely one of them. So mm -hmm. awesome. Thank you. I can't I can't thank you enough. That's amazing. That's very awesome. Uh, Tristan, just shoot me a message on Facebook or in the Facebook group, and I'll get you guys connected. That's thank awesome. you. That's, that's really Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, no, that's wicked. I have another cool project. There you go. Get, See, get the algae I'm, going. Get the, you can try culturing the pods, cool. feed the tank. Yeah. I want to do pods. I want to do brine shrimp. I want to do algae. I want to do phytoplankton. Let's do this. I want to do everything. You know, I'm not going to be able to do everything in one you know, semester yeah. uh, or one year, but you know, this is the start of something new. It's something big, hopefully, that's going to turn into um, you know, something larger than I even can imagine right now. Mm -hmm. um, traction that I'm just getting with the, not only the faculty, but the students and, and parents who are really on board with this. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, the sky's the limit. You know, exactly. the sky's the limit. And I think a big chunk too, because you were saying the media club, like get kids to produce content on it and how do you and like that, because that presence is going to A, teach other kids and B, inspire more and more schools to get on the bandwagon and start doing something similar. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, they might not even know or even really like doing fish tanks or corals or learning about that, but they're in the media, they're developing content. And, you know, giving them something else to do content on just it just broadens their experiences and, and the areas that they enjoy. And, you know, they, they could be the next YouTube star, the next the next Devin from Reef Dudes. <laughs> Bring, bringing on these, these awesome Devin. microbiologists, helping inspire little tiny reefers. <laughs> you never, yeah, you never know. You never know. <laughs> No, that's super. That's awesome, John. I love it. I love what you're doing. I think it's great. I think it's a lot. A lot of good futures going to come out of this, right? You're you're inspiring all those people that are going to turn into future scientists and biologists and who knows what else from there, environmentalists, all this type of stuff. You know, other reef geeks like us, it'd be great. Well, thank you, Dev. You know, and it, and that's the goal is you know you never know the one student that you reach could invent the the next great thing that's going to help the hobby, help the ocean, help the environment. Um, you know, it, it just, it starts with the content and it starts with the right person to get it going. And, you know, ideally we want this across the nation. We want all this, all the schools to be teaching this, uh, because it's important. You know, we, we depend on the ocean and yep. we're destroying it every day. Sadly and so. you know, it's, it, it's sad to see these pictures on, you know, on the news and reading about it. Mm -hmm. So if we can start with this next generation and get them, proactively doing something now you know we not we may not have to worry about it when we get older and have our kids it's true this is probably way more advanced on the road but one really cool feature thing you know they're starting to a lot of places are starting to play with coral spawning and creating yes. like hybrid corals and stuff i mean that would be some amazing kind of future down the road type of advanced curriculum but oh cool. absolutely and i mean they're already asking you know what kind of corals can we grow where do you get them from and mm -hmm. you know and I have a lot of students who want to be bioengineers and, and get into biomedicine and, you know, this, and this is the great stepping stone for them to be able to, to get into this field of science and apply it to, you know, other applications and, and, you know, trying to make sure the environment is safe any way we can, you know, case in point with the hybrid, you know, uh, topic, um, you know, they, they did some studies where they found some corals that kind of developed their own sunscreen mm -hmm. and they're kind of adapting to the warming waters. I mean, how amazing would that be if you could recreate that in a, in a controlled setting and reproduce it constantly and start planting those corals all over the place so, you know, we don't have to worry about coral bleaching anymore. Mm -hmm. Which would be awesome. I, I, I personally think that's going to be the future reef is going to be these hybrid hardier corals. Yeah, so, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, and it, and it, we don't all have, always have the answers, but the more people you have involved and in thinking about these problems, you're going to have more solutions. And, you know, and that's the goal. I want more people thinking about this, um, mm -hmm. thinking outside of the classroom, outside of the, you know, the big picture and, and taking something that they do really love, but don't know too much about and turning it into something that they can carry on into the future. Yep. So true. No problem. So Tristan, okay, I'm going to send you his, he sent me his contact, his email. So I'll send that one to you after John, so you guys can connect. Tristan, so much, you're amazing. Thank much you. Much appreciated. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, 
uh, Hot Ashes. Devin, John, what's the impact of allowing detritus to build up in our tank slash closed, syst closed systems, effectively resulting in a sand bed issue? Well, yeah, I mean, you're going to get detritus, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, a good cleanup crew will help with that, but nothing beats a water change and siphoning, yep. especially on an all-in-one system that's, you know, closed and not open, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and teaching them how to take care of that. But, you know, as you guys, some of you guys know or do not know, detritus is just leftover waste that builds up. Um, it's that gunky stuff that you see at the bottom of the tank and in the back of your rocks where there's no flow. And, um, you know, but if you have the right husbandry skills, that's not going to be a problem. Yep. No, nope, exactly. I mean, with the closed system, I mean, the ocean is endless vast thing, right? So stuff can work its way out. It's such a tiny thing, but in a small tank, it does over time build up. So yeah. If all those fails, do a water change. Suck it out. Keep That's it right. Going. Gotta do those water changes. Those are important. It's true. It um even especially on a small tank, like nanos and stuff, simplest thing you can do, do a water change. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, when I had um you know, I had like a little twenty gallon, I even had a Pico, two yeah. and a half. Nice. Um, I did water changes on that daily. You know, it was a little tiny yeah. cup, but it's like, bloop, bloop. That, yeah, that. still changing the water. You know, you, you have to do it. You know, you got to do that cleaning. You got to do that maintenance because if you don't, issues are going to arise. Things will build up and then you just compound the problem. You get an algae, you get phosphates build up. Mm -hmm. You just don't want that. You know, you don't, you don't want that to happen. Yeah, exactly. Um, does John teach about illness parasites to his kids? Uh, what does he think about using copper? So good question. Um, I actually wrote a paper on how to use biological methods to eradicate diseases oh. and parasites. Because if you really think about it, you, there isn't a magic hand that comes out of the sky and pours in supplements or copper into the ocean, right? Mm -hmm. We have biological means of eradicating ick and parasites yep. and velvet. Um, we have cleaner fish, cleaner shrimp, gobies. So I, I like to move away from the chemical form. Obviously, when you're quarantining a fish that's coming in from a wild source, you want to take those measures. But if you concentrate on aquacultured fish, um, you, you, they tend to be a lot more hardy. But we do, I do go over parasites. We go over brucinella, um, you know, all kind red velvet, and you know. Um, uh, lateral line disease and tangs and mm -hmm. you name it, we cover it. But I, I show them what would be an alternative that mm -hmm. would, you would see in the natural wild and then what, you know, aquarists and hobbyists would do um, when they don't have those, those options to use. And, and copper is, is your kind of your last resort. Mm -hmm. um, if you're using copper. Obviously you're going to have a dedicated quarantine tank. You don't want to pour that in with everybody else. Um, so, you know, Everybody has their own opinion when it comes to treating diseases and parasites. I like to go the biological route. Yeah. I've had great success doing that. And, um, you know, trying to duplicate the ocean as much as possible, mm -hmm. you'll see less problems because the ocean it, it, just got it's it down. Solver. It's good at it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we want to just, we want to duplicate that as best as we can um, and make the environment of our, of our, of our little, you know, ecosystems similar to what you would see in the wild. Mm hmm. No, that was very cool. So you said you wrote a paper on this. Is it actually something published that people could find or look up or is it? It's it's in one of the biological journals I wrote many, many years ago. I'll have mm -hmm. to dig it up. It's it's somewhere. It was co-authored too with a bunch of other people. Nice. Um, I My research was dedicated towards um, cleaner gobies, like yep. the shark nook goby, neon gobies, and, you know, skunk shrimp or, uh, you know, cleaner skunk shrimp, um, cleaner wrasse, those type of things. And, and then we, I had another set of research uh, assistants that focused mainly on uh, the chemical eradication and kind of did a compare and contrast. And, you know, it, uh, it all depends. You know, it, was, it wasn't a long-term study, so you don't really know what the effects are going to be. It was more anecdotal than anything else. Um, but it was good to actually see this and talk about it and, um, and, and get people to read about it and, and know that there's more than one, one solution to get rid of something. Exactly. Um, if you do happen to find that link, I have a couple people that are saying they'd love to check it out. So yeah, absolutely. Find, absolutely. Send it my way I'm if you find it. I have a big giant file on my laptop that's running on a hamster wheel right now <laughs> uh, that, that has all my files from school and everything that I wrote. Yep. Um, so I, I will definitely dig that, dig that out of my 1998 Dell computer. 
Excellent. Okay, so Dr. Welch of Magic, how do you duplicate millions of gallons and miles of swimming space? <laughs> That's a tough question. Yep. I mean, you really can't. <laughs> nope. You really, really can't. You can try the best you can, but you're never, ever going to match the, the amazing system that is the ocean. Mm-hmm. You just you just can't. It's impossible. You cannot match the chemistry, the temperature, the the tides, currents. There's just no way. Um, yep. Even in big giant public systems at the aquariums, they try their hardest, but they still have to get in there, clean the tanks. You know, there's going to be you know unfortunately fatalities of corals and fish. Um, so there's just no way of duplicating nature 100. percent We can try, mm-hmm. but we just can't. If if we could, we might be living on Mars right now. Yeah, you never know. One day, maybe they're, they're working on. I actually listened to a podcast today about that. Ironically, is it on Mars? Um, it's just about space, and actually, like they sent a guy up there to space, and he was up there for just shy of a year, and just the effects on him and stuff. It, it's per- it's really interesting, you know. It's um, they they did they did have twins, an astronaut that had a twin who went yep. on a space shuttle, and then one stayed on Earth, and and one became older than the other. Which was very. I thought that was very interesting. Oh, uh, oh I didn't catch catch that part. Interesting. Yeah, uh, because you're you're moving faster in space relative to the person on Earth. So the person on Earth aged more than the guy who was in space. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, mind blown. Think about that, guys. Think about that. So I'm not just a marine biologist. I'm not just a scientist, but I love science altogether. And uh, you know, right now I teach also teach physics. That's so. Nice. Um, I just love science and I just, I, I want to instill that into the next generation of students and, mm-hmm. and try to get them in, you know, involved and excited about something that they learn in school where it's just not like, Oh, I gotta go to school about homework. I gotta yeah. do this. Yeah. I want them to be excited. I, I, I think you'd be a fun teacher. I think I'd be inspired. I, I feel like we can go into a rabbit hole for hours on random non reefing related, just like everything on for topics. Oh yeah, I mean, I have well, I have students who stay an hour after school where they're supposed to be there for tutoring, but they're just asking a million questions. And <laughs> I have no problem with it because I'm engaging and, and you know it's it's fun and you know I, I I do get the you know you're the popular teacher, so there's a couple other teachers uh, who sometimes like well you're becoming too too popular. You don't want to be you don't want to be that guy, but Mm-hmm. You know, I just have an or- unorthodox style of teaching where I'm hands-on, I'm interactive. I want to get them, I want to get the students interactive and involved um, where I'm just not going to, you know, lecture, give you a, a paper, go go write for an hour, and then I'll, I'll see you next week. Um, so I, I, I like to instill excitement that uh, what you find in school. You know, a lot of kids are, there's a lot of stuff going on, and to take a student's mind off stress or a problem or anything like that with uh with science or any subject mm-hmm. I, I think i did i think i did a good job at the end of the day oh you definitely if you have kids staying an hour after class you're definitely inspiring um before richard just had note but he said to say hi and he misses you and your lovely wife <laughs> richard i miss you buddy say hi to your wife too we miss you guys i'm gonna have to come out and we're gonna get some fun <laughs> excellent be good i love seeing it so much community. Love it. <laughs> I mean, you know, it was great seeing you at Macna. You know, I haven't seen you in I don't know how many years. Um, mm-hmm. But it's great to get in a big giant room with a bunch of uh, hundreds of other crazy people who are just like you and enjoy talking about things that like we're talking about today. Um, you know, so it's I love going to these shows. You know, it was, it was awesome seeing you there and Richard and you know, everybody at all the booths and the exhibitors and vendors, it's such a great, and it's evolved over the years. I just love going, you know, and I don't live in Las Vegas and I don't own a business. I just went, went up to go see all you guys and see all my friends. Mm-hmm. No, it's definitely pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Faux is life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you sold rich on it. Faux is delicious. Uh, I'm thinking of having a student in terms once the new building is finished. Oh, that'd be cool. Uh, so Than Tidal Gardens, think about doing some student interns. That'd be really cool, Than. Yeah, I mean, you, you talk about you know something that I really emphasize when uh, students are getting ready for college and they're thinking about what they want to study. Mm-hmm. Uh, experience is key. Intern, volunteer, do do something where you're learning your trade because yeah. you can have a really good degree from a really prestigious school, but if you don't have that experience. Mm-hmm. Like I'm taking that guy who knows what he's doing. 
versus a guy who just has a piece of paper. Oh, exactly. Experience goes a long way. Oh, absolutely. So interns, yeah, love it. Love it. Okay. Um, Ed's Aquarium, tell him to make sure to let you know when the web page is up so that if someone wants to donate and help out. So definitely let me know once you guys get that site rolling. Thank you, guys. I mean, it, it does mm -hmm. mean a lot. And you, you know, if you're a, a hobbyist, it's not cheap. And, uh, you know, I want to bring these kids, these students, the best that I can uh, with the best equipment that we can get. Um, so they really have the full experience uh, of enjoying this hobby, you mm -hmm. know, and, and and turning these this next generation of hobbyists into uh, something wonderful. So thank you, guys. I really appreciate it very much. It means oh, a lot. That's awesome. Um, students yeah, are going to be really happy to hear that. What's that, sorry? Uh, the students are going to be really happy to hear that. Oh, definitely. Hey, and Tristan's donating a algae reactor. Look at that. You got a new cool class project coming up. I, I'm so, I, I can't even tell you how excited I am. I just I want to go back to to my classroom and just start setting things up. <laughs> and sure I have enough plugs and, and and things going on. And I mean, it's it's such a an amazing experience to be in this hobby mm -hmm. and to not only teach this to the next generation. It's uh, it's beyond words. It really is. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I just think of all the cool people that are going to be inspired and start who knows what to you know, awesome things are going to do for the ocean, the reefs, the hobby. Yeah. And that's, that's the ultimate goal is to, mm -hmm. you know, teach them something new and, and, and actually explode this next generation of hobbyists that can, they're going to be inventing and creating and coming up with new solutions that, you know, we have never thought of. And, and that's the goal is to, mm -hmm. to get them thinking more yep. critical thinking, more, you know, knowledge, mm -hmm. um, you know, you know, again, away from that technology stuff and, <laughs> Um, you know, start that creative thinking oh, again. Go to the video games out into the real world. What? <laughs> yeah. You know, go outside and look at the clouds and ask yourself, why are those clouds there? And what do they mean? And, mm -hmm. you know, ask questions. That's what I try to invoke when I teach yep. is ask questions. Don't just sit there and be, you know, a, a stump on a log. Be interactive. Ask mm -hmm. questions. Find the answers. And then go test them out. Exactly. Hey, keep inspiring, buddy. It's awesome. Love it. Thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> Coral for kids. There you go, TMG. Exactly. Hey, I like it. I like it. Coral for kids. Yep. There you go. I'm not making one of those commercials, though. <laughs> 100 cars for kids. Forget about it. You no, know, just Coral for kids. There you go. Yeah. It could be a it's team a, for a, the a media club. A t-shirt and a banner. And, uh, yeah, no commercials, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. John, you owe me some links later, and I will update that afterwards. And a few different things. I got you covered, bro. Okay, sounds good. Ed, we'll get that one figured out soon. Definitely appreciate it. So any other cool projects coming down the pipe or stuff you got planned? Well, we're, we're definitely starting to transition into uh, SPS portals. Nice. So, um, you know, I just got a, a, a frag kit, and um, the, one, of, one of our our milestones that we want to get is uh you know a bone saw so we can start fragging oh, nice. uh, hard corals yep. and, and and really diving into that so uh you know looking at different types of sps and acropora montipora and and just showing them that it's not just focused on uh zoanthids and pretty corals but there's uh you know there's a huge vast world of really cool interesting things under the sea um, so that's that's our that's our next little goal. It's definitely that'll be cool. Moving 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 on up, you know. <laughs> yep, that's good. It's good expanding. Cowker Cal not walk into a fish store is better than Disneyland. Ah, we'll it is. Yep. It is. Well, it yeah. depends. If it's if it's Halloween time, I don't know. I might take Disneyland. That's fair. I've never been at Halloween. That'd be cool. <laughs> oh, you gotta go. You must yep. go. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to work on this one year. Maybe next year. Okay, so hot ashes. Can we restore the oceans with aquaculture and coral? Some believe yes, others no. I.e. lighting differences, not acceptable from our tanks, natural sunlight, as well as feeding. But if you think about it, just because that last statement, if we're adapting stuff from the coral to our tanks, why not from our tanks back to the coral? Think about that, kids. Yeah, I think so. I mean, and and what we're really doing is we're already taking something that had been in the wild mm -hmm. and putting it into a personal ecosystem at our house or office. Um, so sure, the lighting is going to be different, but 
isn't that the purpose of a lot of what we do is to try to recreate what we see in the ocean? Though, you know, LED light companies, they, they're trying to beat those spectrums that the sun makes. Um, you know, so I, th I think there's a lot more possibilities mm -hmm. with the evolution of the hobby when you just started with fluorescent lights and then we had halides and, you know, your electrical bill was a thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. So I, I think as, as more people are in this and we continue to um, make innovations that it's going to not only help us do what we want to do, but help the coral succeed back in the wild. Yep. Nope. Exactly. Neep reefer, John, keep up the great work. Sounds like you're going to change some kids' lives. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, that's awesome. This is, I love this community. See, this is, this is what drives me every day is that, you know, folks like you guys that mm -hmm. appreciate, you know, what we're trying to do and helping students learn about the next future. You know, we want to make our, our, our earth habitable forever. Yeah. Uh, and it, you know, unfortunately our generation, generations before us kind of ruined that. So, uh, we we kind of dumped it all on the next generation. So if we can teach them how to help fix it, and they come up with those ideas. Mm -hmm. we're, we're changing the planet one one frag at a time. Yeah, exactly. Love it. Uh, Al saying, I bet Terrence from Neptune be interested in helping out John's program. Never know. I'll have to run that one by him. That would be great. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Walt Smith has a good video on populating reefs on the BRS Magnet playlist. Check the one out later. Yeah, that's a definitely great. That's a good tool to use the BRS shows. I like those. Mm -hmm. They have good content. Um, you know, anything that, you know, this this community has grown over the last 20 years. It's just amazing how much great information. I mean, obviously, you're going to get bad information from here, here and there. Everybody's got conflicting ideas and thoughts of how to do things. But I think in the most part, we have a good population of people who are putting out good content, good information and actually getting people the right uh, tools to succeed in this hobby. Because it's not easy. It really isn't. Mm -hmm. It's true. And if, hey, actually, Kyle had a very good point, too, that corals in our tanks are arguably more hardier than the ocean because we put them through a lot of stuff. Yeah. And putting them back in probably is a stronger coral. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we're in a sense, we're kind of already starting the hybridization of corals and saltwater fish. I mean, I, I would kind of be hesitant on reintroducing uh, saltwater fish right away that are aquacultured back into the wild. Just, you know, uh, we saw what happened with farm salmon. Um, you know, as, as, as you know, up there in the, in the Northwest, uh, farm salmon is not always the best and cleanest fish. So I think if we stick with corals, you know, something that is the building block of, of not only our existence, but what the whole rest of the world feeds off of, I think that we're in a good place and in, in, in the right direction if we start with corals. Um, things started in the ocean. You know, that's that's where things began. And, you know, that's the last thing we want to kill off. No, exactly. Well, if if you can find a way, eventually get to that coral spawning and hybrid corals, it'd be amazing. I, I would love to do that. You know, I'd love to yep. do that. Be awesome. That's, I don't know. I, yeah, I think that'd be re really fascinating to actually, it'd be definitely more advanced, but be able to actually ha do that and start blending corals together. You know, grafting and, mm -hmm. you know, mix mixing gametes together. And uh, there's so many possibilities and, you know, it's, and we're just in the infancy of this program. So obviously that is the ultimate goal and to do more research-based mm -hmm. projects, do more experiments, um, you know, and, and try try new ideas and, and just really have no boundaries and mm -hmm. just just go for it and without somebody saying, no, you can't do that. Yeah. Don't take no for an answer. <laughs> no, never. Yeah. Never. Um, so Miss Reefer Fox was asking, what are some tank challenges that you run across in the classroom? So temperature definitely is a big thing. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we try to not use a chiller. Mm -hmm. But we'll get, uh, you know, when you get a lot of bodies in a classroom, the ambient heat warms mm -hmm. up the classroom. So that's something that we monitor a lot. Luckily, we have a good um, AC unit in there. And I kind of directed um, the flow of air towards the tanks. Mm -hmm. Well, luckily, it doesn't dry it out enough to where we need to top off a lot. But that's good. It's cool enough to where um, I can monitor it with a probe or, you know, a 
a little digital little LCD mm -hmm. uh, temperature probe, and I even have one of those barbecue probes, the the new little yep. laser. But nope. I get a little, I can get different readings and kind of average them out. Just sit um, across the room. Yep. Yeah, you just you just shoot it back and forth. I don't always trust those uh, those two dollar uh, thermometers that you buy at Petco. So yep. uh, having multiple sources of data is always good. No, nope, hundred yeah, percent with you on that one. Temperature is definitely uh, one of the issues that. Uh, I run into plus like on the weekends, um, you know, they turn everything off. So uh, mm -hmm. I, I try to go in there and uh, make sure everything's running. And, you know, last thing you want is either a tank overflowing or your tank boiling. Uh, so, but yeah, there's some challenges. But, you know, obviously, as we move towards automation, mm -hmm. it would be a lot easier to do. So another, another good question. What do you guys do in the summertime when kids well, everyone's out for summer? Luckily, I teach summer school. So oh. I'm there 12 months out of the year. Perfect. Awesome. There you go. You're set. Uh, so Than was asking, what size is your classroom tank? Uh, so right now we have, we have two, uh, mm -hmm. we have a 36 gallon and a 40 breeder. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're hoping to expand that to, um, possibly like a hundred, 120. Luckily we're, um, on a level and a building that can support a great deal of weight. Nice. So, you know, I want to get a, a, a mixing, a drum, so we can throw in salt water. I don't have to lug buckets around. And, uh, you know, ideally, yeah, we want to we want to get a lot bigger, you know, have a nice display tank and then have, uh, you know, shallow tanks and frag tanks and uh, you name it. We want to do it. Mm -hmm. So right now we're just we're small and yeah. then eventually we'll, we'll go a little bit bigger as, you know, we get more more excitement for the class and um uh, hopefully some more help for, you know, some of our good friends out there in the hobbyist world and, uh, you know, and, and move from there. But I wanted them to see, you know, like how, how we all started, you know, we all started yep. with a small tank, small system. And, you know, I wanted to show them the proper way of setting up a reef tank from the bare minimums, from mm -hmm. picking out the tank, to picking out the lights, to picking out the sand, rocks, the whole nine yards, but you got to start small first. You don't want to just jump into a large tank right away. Uh, especially when they're learning. Cause like I said, I'm just teaching, they're doing everything else. Yeah. The students are doing everything. <laughs> that title gardens then push for a 180 and compromise down to a 120. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty, advice. That's good. That's good advice Dan. I, I do. I appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> you know, anything that I could do to get, obviously we always want to have a bigger tank. Yep. So, uh, if we can, if we can pull that off, I'm going to thank you, fan. I'll, I'll even name the tank after you. <laughs> this is the title garden tank <laughs> <laughs> brought to you by title gardens. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And then when they're all addicted to coral, send your way down. <laughs> yeah, that's it, Dan. See, I'm not trying to do a monopoly or a pyramid scheme here, buddy. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> only kidding. Only kidding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Joe's, I'll, um, I'll look at your question on Facebook after. He's asked about recycling his tank and lost a new okay. tank, but I'll get to that one on Facebook. But it, to me, it sounds like your tank's just too new for adding tangs and stuff. It's You want to let it cycle fully, and that sounds like your issue. But I'll answer you on Facebook afterwards. Yeah, and, you know, I'm on Facebook. You guys can add me. You know, uh, you know, if you can find me on Dev's page, and uh, I'm in the Reef Dude Saltwater Chat group. Um, <laughs> so throw that out there. And, you know... Uh, we've been doing this for so long. It's, you don't know everything, but you know enough to help people. And, you know, and obviously that's our goal is to help people succeed and be successful in this hobby. Um, you know, we don't want anybody burning money away. We, we want people to be successful and enjoy what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So please ask questions. I mean, you know, I have a, a nano reef group. Um, so if you are in the nano group or in the nano realm of tanks, you know, that's a good resource to have. And, um, but please ask questions. I'm more than happy to help. Nope. Awesome. Always appreciate it. Well, thanks for coming on today, John. It's great to have you. I absolutely love what you're doing. So thanks for taking the time to come share some of the cool stuff that's happening, inspiring all those future reefers and biologists and everything else. Well, I appreciate you having me on, Dev. It's, uh, it's been a long time since we talked. So, uh, well, actually, no, Mac, no, we talked yeah. very shortly, briefly. <laughs> um, but it, I, every time I always appreciate you having me on and, um, you know, your viewers are, are, are what is drives us for this hobby, you know? That's awesome. Hey, it's all about the community, man. I love it. Um, That's right. I'm going to rope you into some future streams, though, because I love what you're doing. It's awesome. You can count on me, brother. Okay, perfect. Okay, thanks, everyone, who joined in today. Um, John, thank you as well.
Thank you, guys. I really appreciate you tuning in and watching, too. Okay. Awesome. All right, guys. Happy Wednesday.